Today we're just going to have a look at the A39 Tortoise. Now you can see this is a whopper of a vehicle. We're just coming in here just under 80 tonnes. It was designed in the first place to be an assault gun. Uh, it was there to carry a large weapon against fortified positions. The idea being it was thought of in about 1943 that when we go back into Europe to invade Europe, the German army would have made many defences. When we go into Germany, there was a Siegfried line. We're going to need a very heavily armoured tank of some sort to be able to batter down those defences and help the infantry to attack them. So you could almost look at this vehicle as being one of the last in the series of the infantry tanks. Now, do we really call it a tank? Uh, it hasn't got a traversing turret in the usual way. So technically, by this time, we're calling tanks vehicles with a turret that can go 360 degrees. So an assault gun or a self-propelled artillery piece is really the correct term for this vehicle. Now, they make only six of these before they cancel the project. The war ends in Europe in May of 1945. They've gone through 18 designs for this vehicle, the Nuffle organization that put it together. They finally build the 18th design. They only finish six of them and they're finishing them as the war ends. One is taken out to Germany after World War II and is trialed there. Um, they realize the gun on it, they fit a 32 pounder gun, um, which is about 94 millimeters. Very powerful gun. It fires a huge shell, 32 pounds for the armor piercing round, very accurately for a great distance. So it's a very, very effective tank killing gun. Um, they actually did firing trials at one point against Panthers and at a thousand meters, this round went straight through a Panther. So very, very effective. Um, the rounds, however, for a 32 pounder, they're huge. So they, for the first time, start putting two-part ammunition in tanks. And by that, what we've got is, in other words, the projectile goes in first, and that's forward by the casing that contains the propellant that blasted out the end. There's a muzzle brake on the end of the barrel, and there's also a collar, which is a counterweight, because this huge gun is actually mounted in a gimbal mount, 20 degrees eyes aside, um, it doesn't have the usual trunnions that most guns have on a mantlet. They fit Beza machine guns, a ball mount on the side, two in the turret as well in a separate cupola, and uh, they actually crew this vehicle with seven crew. So you've got commander, two loaders this time, and a separate machine gunner in there as well. And inside that vehicle, compared to most tanks we've got here, um, you could almost hold a party in it. It's got a massive interior. Powered along by a Meteor V, uh, a Meteor 5 engine, which gives about 600 horsepower, um, its mobility actually wasn't that bad on the road. Top speed about 12 miles an hour. So that wasn't too bad going around. Cross country, it drops enormously. When you've got 78 tons, despite the width of the tracks, you've still got a bit of a problem going around the place. But don't forget, this wasn't designed for speed. It was designed for a slow, steady, very thickly armored vehicle attacking fortified positions. That thick armor, in places, it's over eight inches thick on the front, on this massive great casting, which was quite an engineering feat in itself. So engine in the back is propelled along on these very wide tracks, and the suspension system is uh, actually a torsion bar suspension on double bogies. So they, the torsion bar comes across and you've got pairs of wheels on each side protected by this massively thick armor. So it's a tank that was really at the end of this design process, assault gun type tanks. It doesn't see service. They trial one out in Germany, but they bring the six of them, once they finish this trialing process, never go into service. Um, we've got the last remaining complete one here. We have run it at one of our events. Um, there's another, a wreck of a, one of these tortoises on a range still in Scotland, um, but that was it. So it was a, a very one-off British tank story.